G'day there, I'm Dana from Piwakuka Valley Homestead and today we're going to be talking about the five best, easiest animals I think you should start with on your homestead. The first uh, animal that I reckon everybody, every homestead should have is chickens. I, chickens have been said to be the gateway animal to homesteading and they were definitely the case for us. We got our first chickens and then eventually we ended up with this place. So definitely the gateway animal for us but chickens you can keep them in town you can keep them in a relatively small area they say chickens only need 10 square feet or one square meter each uh, to be relatively happy obviously if you can let them out in free range that's even better but you can keep them in quite a small coop and give them a decent size run they need about a foot or 30 centimeters about this much perch space each inside and they need somewhere to get out of the bad weather obviously they're fantastic consumers of all things vegetable so all our rubbish and stuff goes to them vegetable rubbish goes to them and they turn it into chicken poo which i then add to the garden it's a great symbiotic relationship and i really enjoy having the chickens here you can get a huge variety of different types of chickens you can go with your hybrids that will lay really really well for you or you could go for some of the more pretty breeds um, some of them are better layers some of them are better meat chickens or even some of the more dual purpose sorts of breeds uh, light Sussex and Orpingtons would be the two probably most popular backyard dual purpose chickens that you can use for both meat and eggs and you usually find those bigger chickens are a lot more laid back they tend to be a bit more friendly Bard Rock being another real popular backyard chicken the second animal I think would be really great for beginners is rabbits we ran meat rabbits here for quite a few years we don't have them at the moment uh, just for all sorts of reasons um, we'll probably get back to them we colony raised them so we had three girls in and a boy in all in together in a big shed they would have litters naturally and once they rabbits once they'd wean them we'd pop them into a separate pen to keep them away from mum and dad and let them grow out there rabbits are incredibly easy to process they have decent sized litters they grow really fast we can't grow them out on grass here because we have so many wild rabbits and we have the uh, rabbit khaleesi virus here but if you don't have those things and you don't have a skyhawks coming after them you can um, grow them outside on grass for very very little money they're really helpful to help eat the greens and stuff out of the garden and we did give ours some pellets especially the young grow outs that we're trying to get that high protein food into them so they grow really quickly and they largely ate hay and grass and water obviously so that they're really easy having processed rabbits and chickens i would do rabbits hands down they're so much easier so much less messy um, very quick i've actually put together a book on colony raising meat rabbits which i'll put a link to down below it's got everything we know about looking after rabbits troubleshooting them uh, there's a disease reference area in the back how to pick good breeders what to do when you have baby kits like the whole shebang's all in there so i'll put the link to that book down below so you can have a look for yourself the third probably easiest animal I would say would be um, goats. Now in New Zealand we can't get the cute little goats but those Nigerian dwarf goats that you can get in the States they're fantastic a lot of people raise them even if they only have like a quarter acre. We've got goats we love our goats. Uh, a hot wire like an electric fence system is probably quite necessary otherwise the goats are renowned for jumping fences escaping so either some deer fencing or some hot wire we've never had any problem with them getting out just with a hot wire around the top and then we just have sheep netting just that uh, like that mesh panelling stuff uh, around the rest of our fences and that keeps the goats in quite nicely I really adore goats versus sheep I find them a lot more friendly they come when you call them for us it's a lot less maintenance because we can call them up as opposed to sheep we would have to I don't know how we would catch them to be honest our place is so steep and we don't have many internal fences yet but the goats come home every night they're really easy to get into that routine we've got a milking goat so we get dairy from her the rest of them um, meet goats the other reason we really like goats is because they like to eat scrub as well as eating grass so for us we've got a lot of gorse and the goats will eat it I don't I don't understand why the goats will eat it it's so prickly but they do they really enjoy it especially the flowers they like the flowers the fourth animal i reckon would be great for beginners is ducks they are a lot more messy if you try and keep them in a small pen but if you have enough room for them to let them wander around they're better in your garden because they're not so destructive as chickens are they don't scratch and dig so as long as the seedlings are that little bit bigger um, they'll get in there they eat the slugs they eat the bugs they um 
or eat tiny little weeds. And you can get different breeds of ducks. Some of them are better for egg laying, some of them are better for meat. And same with chickens, that you can get the dual purpose ones as well. We have got apple yards here. They do need somewhere to have a bit of a splash. Ducks tend to only, well they tend to prefer to poop in the water, which um, is kind of gross, but that's duck life I guess. You can just get some of those little paddling pools and have it set up. I've even seen one where they had a bath set up in the edge of their garden that they would fill up, they had a tap for it, they'd fill it up and then a ramp up to it so the ducks could walk up the ramp, swim in the thing, make their mess and then they would simply stir it with a stick once a week and open the tap at the bottom and it would go down and water into the garden. So I love that concept of permaculture where the problem is often the solution and in this case that's a perfect, perfect solution to that problem. Ducks are pretty low maintenance. If you want to get collect the eggs off them you will need a pen to corral them in at night but again they get used to that habit of coming home the same as what chickens and goats do. So if you feed them each night in their house they'll come running in and shut the gate behind them keep them locked up until sort of late morning when they've finished laying their eggs let them out let them go off and do their job you can gather up the eggs they're not very good at laying in nests they tend to lay all over the place so you just have to go and gather them up ducks eggs are higher in protein than chicken eggs they are that little bit bigger they're brilliant for baking with and they're really popular with some communities around the place that you may well be able to sell your duck eggs for a lot more than you can sell your chicken eggs for and the fifth animal i've got there that is perfect for beginners is actually pigs now maybe not breeding pigs breeding pigs is a whole nother thing all onto its own but if you want to just raise wieners up to uh, butcher weight then all you need is a pen that they can live in i would recommend a concrete floor pen with some decent fences around it use um, hog panels or something to make some solid fences big pigs can get quite pushy uh, and they'll need a good um, shelter to keep them out of the sun and out of the rain, out of the wind and somewhere obviously where you can water and feed them and um, always always at least keep two pigs at the same time because they're really social animals and they prefer the company. So if you're raising pigs from a wiener which is usually about six weeks up to butcher weight which for most pigs is about six months what you'll need to be doing is feeding them twice a day and ensuring they have a constant supply of water they're pretty low maintenance they're pretty easy to keep generally speaking they don't have too many issues with diseases if you want to start looking into maybe breeding pigs that's a whole separate thing you'll need a boar and a sow or preferably two sows so they can keep each other company and you need somewhere separate for the boar uh, we personally have taken on Cooney Cooney pigs, uh, which I'll link that video up in the description for uh, up in the card things for you. Our Coonies are really cute. Um, they're quite a bit smaller, they're slower growing, but you can mostly feed them on grass. Um, so there's quite a few reasons why we chose to do Coonies. So check out that video for a bit more information. So I hope that's been really helpful for you. If it has, hit the like button and feel free to share it with anyone that you think it might benefit from it. Maybe consider subscribing to us. We put out videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food and other homesteading things. And I'll see you in the next one.